Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Subtracting Two-Digit Numbers with Renaming. Another way to say this you might see in some books is subtracting two-digit numbers with borrowing. Now, the first time you see borrowing, it looks a little bit weird and a little bit cumbersome and complicated, but it's actually very easy to understand once we get some practice. What I want to do is just work a couple of problems and show you what we're doing, get the answers, and then I'm going to explain to you why you're actually allowed to do this, why it actually works. And then we're going to finish all of the rest of the problems to give you a lot of practice. It's easier just to tell you what we're doing by just solving the first problem. So let's go and do that right now. The first problem is going to be 23 uh, minus 15. Right, so we write it uh, stacked up on top and bottom like, like this, and we always go to the right-hand column first. We start with the top number and subtract the bottom number. So we have 3 minus 5. Now you see there's a problem right away, because if I have 3 marbles and try to subtract 5 marbles from it, how can I do that? How can I take 3 minus 5? If I only have 3, how can I take more away? How can I take 5 away? It's something that you don't think you're allowed to do. So because of this, we never ran into this with any of the other problems because all of the other problems had a top number that was bigger than the bottom. But in this case, you can see that three is not bigger than five. So what do you do? Let me go through how to solve it. And then we're gonna talk about why it works. So what I want to do is uh, go through and tell you exactly what we're going to do. This three is not bigger, so we're not allowed to really subtract it. What we're going to do is borrow. We're going to borrow from the column next door. We're going to borrow from the two. Here's what you actually do. We make this three. We do a single strike through of this three. And right on top, we turn the three into 13, right? You're going to say, how can you do that? Well, because we borrow from the other column and we change this two into a one. So what you have to do in your paper is strike through the three and make it 13. And then you, in order to do that, it has to come from somewhere. We're borrowing from the column next door, so the two turns into a one. Now what you do is you look in this column and say it's 13 minus five. We know how to do that. Start with 13 in your mind and go down. 12, 11, 10, nine, eight. Okay, so we landed on eight. So we write the number eight down below in this column. Now we're done with this column. The next column over, we have one minus one. You all know that one minus one is zero. We could put a zero here, but zeros in front as a, as, a, as a number in the front doesn't really do much. So the zero in the front doesn't mean anything. And so we can just leave it off and say that the answer is eight. Now, a couple things I wanna do is let's just check that this is correct. The original problem was 23 minus 15. We can start with 23 and go down 15. So 22, 21, 20. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. You see, we subtracted 15, we still got to 8. So this is the right answer. And we had to do the borrowing because 3 was smaller than 5. So we made it 13. And in order to do that, we had to take it from the next door neighbor to the left. I want to do one more, and then I want to explain more about why we're allowed to do this. Let's say we have 26 and we're subtracting from it 19. Okay, how do we do that? We have the same problem. In the right-hand column, it's six minus nine. If I have nine, I'm sorry, six apples, and I wanna take nine away, you can't really do it because you only have six to begin with. So when you have that situation, you have to change it, or you might say rename, which is why it's called renaming. You might also think of it as borrowing. We take the six and we strike through it, and we make it actually 16. But in order to do that, we have to borrow it from the next door neighbor, so the two now becomes a one. You do not want to scribble through the numbers. You want a single line through the numbers so you can still read what you're doing, and you want to write clearly on top what the new numbers become. Now, in the right-hand column, you have 16 minus 9. Starting with 16, go down. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. You landed on 7. Seven goes in the right-hand column. On the left-hand column, you have one minus one. You could write a zero here, but you don't need zeros in front of your number, so really the answer is seven. If you go 26 and go 19 down from that, you're going to land on the number seven. That's the final answer. Now, I don't wanna spend all day talking about why this works, but I do wanna talk a little bit about it. Let's look at the first problem here. It was 23, and we were subtracting 15. Okay, so you might say, 
how am I able to make this 13 by striking through the two? If I turn the two into a one, how, am I, how does that make it better? Well, the thing that you need to realize or, or understand is that this number 23, these columns mean different things. This column here is called the ones column. These, uh, because it's 21, 22, 23, every number in that column is just, is, its value is one, okay? But every number in this column, this is called the actually the tens column. When you think about it, for 23, this number doesn't mean two, this number means 20. So this means 20 plus three. This 23, when we write it together like this, you know that this number means three, but this number doesn't really mean two, it really actually means 20. That's what we mean by the tens column, because it's two, uh, and, and you have it, it, this is worth 10, and you have two of them, so there's 20. This guy means, the one here does not really mean a one, it means 10. And this number right here, it means five. So 20 plus three is 23, 10 plus 5 is 15. That's what numbers mean when we, the columns mean something. So when we actually strike through the 2 and make it a 1, we're not really making it, a, a changing it from 2 to 1. We're actually changing it from 20, because that's the value of this, 20, to 10. And so we're borrowing 10. And that 10 that we borrow goes next door, and that's why it makes it 13. So we're not really borrowing 1 here. We're actually borrowing 10. And that's why when you add the 10 to here, it becomes 13. So when you cannot subtract numbers in the right column, you borrow from the next column over, but you're really borrowing 10. And that's why these numbers, in this case, became a 16. Because we didn't borrow 1, even though we, we put a 1 here, we actually borrowed 10. The value of this 2 was 20, now the value is 10. The 10 that we borrowed goes into here, and that's how we do the subtraction. Now that's what it means. But the most important thing is to get a lot of practice with it. So we're going to continue to do that right now. Let's say we have 33 minus 18, right? Again, we cannot take 3 minus 8. So what we have to do is borrow, right? So we say, well, this 3 is not going to really be a 3 anymore. It's going to be a 13. And to do that, I'm going to change this 3 into a 2. But in the back of your mind, remember that this value of this 3 is not really 3. It really means 30. Why? Because this is 30 plus 3. That's what this really means. All right? So this 3 going into a 2 really means that I borrowed 10, and that 10 goes into here to make the 13. So that's what you're doing. Now, 13 minus 8. Start with 13 in your mind. Go down. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8 seven, six, five. You land on the number five. Five goes under this column. Now in these other problems, we had one minus one gave a zero, so we didn't really write it. Here we had one minus one gives a zero, we didn't really write it. Here we have two minus one, which gives us one, so we have to actually write it. And the answer here is 15. So 33 minus 18 is 15. Now we're going to have to get used to doing this renaming or borrowing, whatever you want to call it. Um, because it's something that's not going to go away. So let's just get some more practice. What if we have 45 minus 16? If you try to take 5 minus the 6, you can't do it because it's not big enough. So we say this 5 is not 5 anymore. It's really worth 15. It has to come from some place, so we change the 4 into a 3 in this column. Now we say 15 minus 6. Start with 15 in your mind. Go down. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. And the answer that you get is 9 in this column. This column, we have now a 3. Minus 1 gives us 3 minus 1 is 2. So you get an answer of 29. That's the final answer. We're going to do enough of these so that you're absolutely confident in what you're doing. What if you have 41 minus 27? If you try to take 1 minus 7, you can't do it. So what you instead do is you say, this is not worth 1 anymore. It's really an 11. Where does it come from? The 4 then has to become a 3. Do not get confused with the numbers above. The 11 goes in this column. The 3 is in this column. So 11 minus 7. Start with 11 in your mind. Go down. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. The number you land on is actually a 4. So a 4 goes in this column. 
This column is three minus two, which you all know is one. And so the answer to this is actually 14. So 41 minus 27 is uh, 14. Okay, what if you have 51 minus 16? Subtract these guys. Again, one minus six, the one is not large enough. So we're gonna change this one and actually make it 11. And it has to come from somewhere, so we strike out the five and actually make it a four. But again, we're not really making it four, we're borrowing 10 here because this is worth 50, and now it's worth 40, so the 10 is really going in this column. So what is 11 minus six? Start with 11 in your mind, go down. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. So we go down and we land on the number five. So five goes in this column. Now we have four going down by one. Four minus one gives us three, and the answer is now 35. So 51 uh, minus 16 is 35. All right, what if we have, we have just a few more problems here. What if we have uh, 53 minus 28? Again, you try to do three minus eight, but it's not big enough, so you can't do it. So you strike through this and make this three a 13 instead. And it has to come from somewhere, so it comes from next door, change the five into a four. Start now with 13 and subtract eight, go down. 12, 11, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. The answer is five. So we put a five down below. And then we have four minus two, you go down three, two. So four minus two is two. Put a two down here and the answer for this is 25. All right? Getting a little more practice. What if we have 62 minus 14? Again, you try to subtract two minus four, but you can't do it. So we change the two and make it a 12. It has to come from somewhere. So the six now becomes a five. Now in your mind, start with 12 and go down four. Start with 12, go down 11, 10, nine, eight. And so the answer you get uh, here in the right-hand column is an eight, and then five minus one is a four. And so the answer you get there is 48. Okay, two more problems. What if we have 54 and we're subtracting from it 36. So again, we try to say four minus six, but it, you can't do it. So the four now becomes a 14 and it has to come from somewhere. So the five now becomes a four. We've borrowed 10 and stuck it in the other column. Now start with 14 and go down six. So we go 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight. You land on eight. So that's the final answer in the right hand column. Now we have four minus three, so you can think going four, going down, three, two, one. We've gone down three, we've landed on one. The answer is 18. 54 minus 36 is 18, and we have only one more problem. And it is 65 minus 26. In the right hand column, we try to do five minus six, but we can't do it, so we strike through the five and actually make it 15. It has to come from somewhere, so the six now becomes a five. Now we do 15 minus six, 15 going down six, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine. We land on the number nine and nine goes in the right hand column. Now five minus two, start with five in the mind and go down four, three. And we land on three, so the answer is 39. All right, so in this lesson, we have mastered and start, well, we started the concept of subtracting two digit numbers with renaming. Also, you might see it called subtracting uh, numbers with borrowing. And the borrowing comes from the idea that in the right hand column, if the number on the top is smaller than the number on the bottom, you're not gonna really be able to subtract, so you have to borrow. But remember, the right hand column is really what we call the ones column, and the left hand column is really what we call the tens column. So this two is not really a two, it's really a 20. Plus, there's an invisible plus here, a three here. So when we strike out the two and make it a one, we're really not subtracting one, we're subtracting 10 from that column. And that 10 goes over here to make it 13. That's how the borrowing process works. Again, you might also see, as, see it as renaming because we've kind of renamed the problem to make it possible. So I want you to solve every one of these yourself when you get the right answers, follow me on to the next lesson of part two, where we're going to continue getting practice subtracting two-digit numbers with renaming, also called with borrowing.